I did a blog today on how Greek and English are different when it comes to style, specifically a sequence. And I realized that it might be easier to convey the same information by showing it to you on the screen. You're going to see in this particular version of my software that it's not doing its tagging between Greek and English very well. And so I won't be able to illustrate that. I'm sorry. So just follow the cursor. This is the passage where Jesus appoints his 12 disciples, 12 apostles. And I want to point out the chi. So it's and he appointed. And you see the and here in the NASB, but it's not in the ESV, it's not in the CSB, and as you would expect, it's not in the NIV. So, and he made the 12, he appointed the 12, and he gave a name to Simon Peter. Well, and, there's no and in the NASB, there's no and in the ESV or the CSB, and the point I'm trying to make is that these translations claim to be, quote, literal. They claim to be function, basically they're functional equivalent translations. The CSB has a different term. But the point is, they're not translating the chi's. And, and here, before I get further into this, here's the point I want to make. One of the real fallacies about formal equivalent translations is that they are essentially literal. They, they try to reflect the underlying Greek structures. And the fact of the matter is they don't. There's not a single verse, I would guess, in the Bible where the grammar and the vocabulary and the structure are exactly replicated in English. Why? Because English and Greek is so different. Look down here then in Mark 3.17. There's the chi, but there's no chi over here in the ESV. There is one in the CSB and in the NASB. So it's and James, the understood uh, brother, uh, son of Zebedee. And everybody gets that one. And John, his, the brother of James. And he gave to them a name, but where's... In the chi, where's the chi in the NASB? It's not there. Where's the chi in the ESV? It's not there. Uh, there the parag the uh, parentheses made it too awkward. I understand why they're not doing it. But the point is, these translations claim to be formal equivalent translations, reflecting the underlying Greek structure. Well, if you're going to do that, then you got to translate all the words, and they're not doing it. Now, you get a chi here in Mark 3.18. You, you get the introductory chi in the NASB, not in the ESV. And then you get a series. And this is typical in Greek. This is how you do a series. You say item, chi, item, chi, item, chi. Okay, well, that's no big surprise. But what, and, and so you get, and it's bad English. I mean, the poor English. And again, that's the point. How Greek and English relay series of things is different. In Greek, it's, Chi, item, chi, item, chi, item. But in English, we say item, comma, item, comma, and final item. When it's using the word item to meaning a noun or something. And so you have a fundamental difference in how you do series. Now, if you, well, I'm just getting through this. So it's and Andrew. And I like this chi uh, in the... Uh, NASB, because you've had these, you know, Simon, and you've had James and John, and they, they've got semicolons there, which help. And then you have another series. So this is a good chi here. And, but look what happens. And Andrew, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, and Thaddeus, and Simon, and Judas. That's just bad English. I mean, in English, you have a conjunction before the final item, but you don't do that every time. You go, well, okay, I'm, we're, tra we're translating every Greek word. Well, if you're going to translate every Greek word, then translate every Greek word, which they don't do. Now, the CSB does something very strange. 
you know, they said Simon, and then there's a semicolon, and James and John, semicolon. They omit the chi in 318, but then they say Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, implying there's a pairing of Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas that's different. And you see James and Thaddeus. Well, why not and James and Thaddeus? It's creating an artificial uh, three sets of pairs. And you could read Simon and Judas as a pair as well. So you actually have four. I only pointed out two in my blog. But you actually have four pairs implying that Andrew doesn't have some kind of relationship with the other people, but Philip and Bartholomew have a relationship that Matthew and Thomas don't. Matthew and Thomas have a relationship that James and Thaddeus don't. See the problem? Well, at least in this last one, you have James, the son of Alphaeus, comma, and Thaddeus, but then you have a semicolon. Why on earth do you have that? Up here, you have Philip and Bartholomew, no comma after Philip, semicolon. Matthew and Thomas, no comma, semicolon. You see what's going on? CSB is just creating structures that don't exist. And I don't think that's particularly helpful. Uh, this is one of those cases where I think the NIV, and yes, I'm on the committee, but I didn't have anything to do with this. I, I think they got it just right. Uh, they ignore the initial chi, which makes perfectly good sense. And these are the 12 he appointed. Simon, comma, James, and John, comma, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, Thaddeus, Simon, and Judas. Now, that's English. That's proper English style. And frankly, style should be part of communicating. Well, it is part of communicating, and therefore it should be part of translations. Anyway, my point is, when formal equivalent translations claim to reflect the underlying Greek structures, it's just not true. Because in every single verse, things are left out, things are moved around, things are interpreted. Yes, if you have two or three years of Greek, you can look at the NASB and the ESV, and you can get an idea of what the Greek is behind it. But for the person who doesn't know, well, and, and if you know enough about Greek to see it, you should be reading Greek. But to the person who doesn't know enough Greek, that person cannot tell when the translation is actually following Greek structures and when, in every verse of the Bible, it diverges from that style. Anyway, my rantings and thoughts for the day.